All right, Mr. Basis, you pen got us another episode 11 cut content for Classroom of the Elite. Let's see what he has to say. Classroom of the Elite season 3 episode 11 is here, concluding the final special exam to end off the first year. And surprisingly enough, I did not hate this episode. Okay. In fact, this is probably one of the better episodes this season in terms of an adaptation. Bro doesn't give a fuck about the basketball animation. No, I I think that the animation quality in the basketball scene, it was just the PowerPoint stuff that I was a little bit mad at. Like, it's not that big of a deal. I didn't really give a fuck. Like, I just wanted to care about the outcome of it, right? So, it was fine with me. Still have quite a bit of cut content to get through. The most notable one being Class B versus D completely skipped. Class B versus D. Why didn't that happen? To focus on Anakoji and Arisu to wrap it up in one episode, but I guess what happened, huh? There's no way that Ryuan would lose, right? Well, no, I, I, I think that if Ayanokoji loses, and I don't know the points distribution, my interpretation was that he would drop back down to Class D like he prophesied, albeit it was supposed to be expelling Kushida. But then Ryuan might fucking win against Ichinose because it's like, you know, Dragon Boy is back. How could he possibly lose, right? He can't lose. Ryuan would straight up be expelled if he loses because he went in raw. So he would win. And then maybe he would come back to class C so that at the end of the first year, we maintain the order of the same classes. Or maybe it doesn't change. Maybe we just maintain, you know, Ryun starts, stays in class D, Anakoji C, but Ryun doesn't get expelled because he won. Regardless, he has to win, right? So let's not waste any more time and dive into all the cut content and changes for this week's episode. The episode starts with the White Room flashback, which was actually at the very beginning of volume 11, so I'm really glad that they did not skip it. Okay. Also, the anime handles this flashback quite differently, but surprisingly not in a bad way this time around. I'll talk more about this later in the video. The next thing that stands out is the anime skipping a lot of build-up before the match finally starts. Which really sucks because the anime cuts out this amazing illustration. Ah, light novel illustration cut out. I thought that these light novel illustrations are safe. I thought they would always animate these, but even the light novel illustration is not safe from Studio Lurch. Of Kyo and Arisu standing in front of each other. Also, another odd change is the fact that Kyo and Arisu are sitting in front of each other with the screens blocking their faces compared to them sitting side by side like the anime showed. Uh. Next up, Kyo and so the before, where were they sitting? Kyo and Arisu are sitting in front of each other. In front of each other, like side by side. I, I think the side by side is to like make it a little bit closer because the whole... Arisu kept looking over to Koji and kept talking, chatting up. Are you having fun? Am I having fun? You know, stuff like that. I feel like the anime intentionally put them side by side too. I don't know, get a little bit more wholesome, <laughs> friendly dynamic rather than them just going at it. I don't know. With the screens blocking their faces compared to them sitting side by side like the anime showed. Next up, Kyo Bald. mentions that he never told Horikita Bald. about the information he and Yukimura gathered from Katsuragi. Then we have Kyo intentionally trying to act like he's. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm getting instruction from Horikita, though, I answered. Didn't you just say that you did, though? You just said Horikita san gave you instruction. Hoshinomiya sensei, seeing Sakayana get chuckling at me, hold her, held her hand up to her forehead, letting out an oh no moaning as she thirsts over Aonokoji and the other high school's children. Sakagami simply shook his head, seeing Sakayanagi extract information from me so quickly. Hmm, okay. He's falling for Arisu's traps, so the teachers don't find him sus. All right. Next up, we have the basketball game, which had some really weird changes. They, First okay, up, like what? the game was 5v5 instead of 3v3 like the anime showed. And it's it was 5v5 before? The, anime completely the five students from my classes were... Makida Susan, who the fuck is that? The ace player of our lineup. Minami Setsuya. Ike Kanji, let's go. Hondo Ryotaro, let's go. And Onodera Kayano. Oh, we saw Onodera, Onodera, Hondo, and Ike. Who the fuck is Makida and Minami? Who? 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 Do you guys know? Have they ever been shown in the anime? A single time? They straight up, like, who the, what the fuck are these names? <laughs> Pseudo was not included in the lineup. Also, I had included one girl, and as mentioned earlier, our ace player was Makita. Who the fuck is our ace player Makita? <laughs> According to Pseudo, if Makita practiced with the basketball team, then his skill should be up to par. So this ace is a fucking NPC that's not even animated in the anime? He raised the existence of their ace player because the class has 25 students instead of 40 like- 
completely eliminated the existence of Makita Susume because the class is 25 in the anime instead of 40 in the light novel. Amazing. The light novel. And when Kyo switched in Sudo, he pulled out Ike instead of Hondo. Oh. Also, the anime. Oh, the anime decided to give uh, EK a little bit of highlight because EK got the bucket, right? Isuda did a crazy pass and then, you know, EK fucking went for the, the shot. Yo, EK getting some doves. Okay, we have some EK enjoyers over on the Studio Lurch. Showed pseudo winning through teamwork compared to the light novel where he carries the entire game by himself. I think this is a better way to handle it, right? I think there was a big point where Arisu says that pseudo is not mentally prepared. He's going to be tilted. But then Anako was like, you sure about that? And Suda was very calm and did a cool play and got the team involved. So instead of like solo carrying, he kind of got everybody involved. I feel like it's a better representation of Suda's development. After focusing and not falling for her classiest tricks. Next up, we have the typing and written tests. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Hakase got so much highlight in the typing, bro. Let's fucking go. The typing test was extremely fast in the light novel as well. <laughs> Though there was a lot of planning and strategizing, cut from both of the written tests such as Kyo intentionally throwing down the K did not these three fucking idiots they don't know what the fuck they're doing K did not study for shit Sato has just given up she's just looking up thinking of what she's gonna eat for dinner tonight <laughs> and what's her name at the fucking bottom isn't that Ike's girlfriend Hoshino nah not Hoshinomiya sensei uh ha, hori, not hori, no I, it's not Haruka Haruka's the other Anakoji group girl it's blonde blue hair who's the one at the very bottom I forgot her name but uh, Shinohara Shinohara I keep forgetting her name because like she's not that really important but apparently Ike and Shinohara like you know they got something something going on right okay okay the English test by putting whoever he could in there, which would allow them to focus all of their academic strength. What'd you say? Who the written tests, such as Kyo intentionally throwing down the English test by putting whoever he could in there, so which would fill. allow them to focus. They, they, they're just straight up fillers, kids. Like, Kyo just put them down as fill. They don't matter. We just fill. <laughs> just throw it in there. Put in there. Okay. Which would allow them right. to focus all of their academic right. strength into the next written test, which turned out to be maths. Let's go, Mi Chan. Yo, Kushida, best at math, right? She's very good at math. Mi Chan's getting involved. Hirata boy, Keisei, let's go. Yeah. What? <laughs> Kei Sato, Chinohara. They really are fucking useless, aren't they? Like, like I, I mean, hey, K is useful. She's a good tool, right? She's a good tool. Sato got rejected pretty hard. Shinohara just took straight bullets. Apparently, she has a fucking OnlyFans, but at least she's got EK now. And even though everyone in the class managed to get over 90 points in maths, Damn. and Yukimura came at the top spot, Damn. Class C still lost by 20 points. And really? Sakayanagi says that Class C might have won if someone like Horikita or Koenji were participating. I don't know if Koenji participating would have helped. Maybe Horikita though. Then we have the mental math section. This girl is real nice. I forgot her name still, but I like her design. That girl right there, she real nice. This was mostly the same as the anime. Bald. Aside from Sakayanagi telling Kyo how she managed to stop Katsuragi from betraying them. Ah, I gave him a message ahead of time. I believe we're holding someone hostage, right, are we? I gave him a message ahead of time. I told him that if he were to betray me, I would randomly expel some of the students who were earnestly trying their hardest in their class. He does seem to care quite a bit about his fellow students. He would never let more people be sacrificed to serve his grudge. Huh. So Arisa just said I'd shoot blindly into someone. Well, we're earnestly trying their hardest. So it's not even like Katsuragi faction. It's just like any fucker that's trying hard. I'm going to kill him if you betray me, Katsuragi. Sakayanagi had been around Katsuragi for far longer than I had. She was all too familiar with his strength and his weaknesses. That's right. Bald. Up Katsuragi from betraying them. But after this, instead of continuing the events, we switch back to class B versus D. Now, there's a very small chance this part gets adapted in the next episode. Maybe. I personally don't think that it will be because Maybe we'll just get like a brief talk over it and then they'll have like a quick flashback just to see like the outcome of the results, right? Not too long, just very short, just to brief us, you know, on what happened. Because they've already adapted the end of volume 11, but there's always a small chance. So if you want to skip this section of the video, I'll leave a timestamp for you guys. Should we skip? Go to 604 to skip this section. That's, that's like third, that's, that, that's third of the video we're skipping. Should we skip or should we watch? I don't know. The preview shows something. Don't skip it. You don't know. I'm conflicted. 
I mean, I, it's not really spoilers. Like, we all know that Ryun's gonna fucking win, right? Un unless it's like... Some people are saying skip it. Some people are saying don't. They're, most people are saying no. I mean... It's not really a spoiler if we all can anticipate that Ryuan's going to win because if he loses, then he's actually getting expelled. So we already know the outcome. All that matters is the details. And I don't think the details are really much of a spoiler. What should I do? I'm, conflict I'm conflicted. I, I, I don't want to... Like, if it's like huge spoilers, then I don't want to watch. It's not really a major spoiler, so don't skip. Ryuan does something cool. I don't fucking know, man. I should probably skip it. The anime... If they include it, they will rush a lot. Well, we know that Ryun's not going to get expelled, and he might do something sick, and the anime might just fucking butcher it. So, I think it doesn't hurt to watch it, man. I don't think it hurts to watch it. When we switch back to their match, we see that they're already done with four events, and even though Ichinose's class had three of their events selected, they only have one win so far. Uh -oh. And the reason for that is because a few Class B students are having stomach aches and some of them got into a fight. The <laughs> <laughs> what, what were we doing, huh? What was, what was Ryun and his goons doing? Putting fucking laxatives in, you know, class B students? <laughs> got them in a couple fights to take him out before the fight even happened. Sounds like classic Ryun tactics. Yep, yep. The previous day. Now, as you can expect, this was all most likely done by Ryu. <laughs> yeah. But this man starts talking shit and blaming the class B students. Oh, we're talking shit. Yo, teach. Hurry up and start the fifth event already. Those class B slackers couldn't even manage to keep themselves in shape for the day of the exam. Are you really going to make concessions for a bunch of stupid, naive losers like that said Ryu and Snidely? Watch your mouth. Despite Chash Chabashira's warning about his language, Ryun didn't seem to care. If anything, he got more extreme. Fuck them, they're all in the toilet shitting their fucking assholes out. Bunch of fucking, you know, they should have uh, eaten better food. And tells their teachers to start the next event already. Alright. Chabashira tries to tell Ryun to shut up. Fuck you, but Chabashira. This man did not care at all. And after that... Oh, look, I don't know if they're in the bathroom or whatever, but seriously, they could be using this time to discuss strategy or something. Oh my god, not only did we put them in the fucking bathroom, but then we use that opportunity to say they might be fucking stalling and strategizing. And come on, multiple students getting sick at the same time sounds fishy. Yeah, it does sound fishy. <laughs> what kind of underhanded PS are you trying to pull each other? I can't believe he said multiple students getting sick at the same time sounds kind of fishy. Yeah, it does, because you did something, but then you can pivot that onto fucking class B and say, yeah, they're all fucking stalling at the same time. Hmm. Chabashiro, you should go to the fucking bathroom and see what happens. Starts saying that class B could be using this time to make plans in the bathroom and says that Ichinose <laughs> oh is using god. underhanded tactics. Oh my god. After that, class B ended up losing the next event as well. <laughs> <laughs> Which was karate submitted by class D. Yo, someone should have fucking went in. Like they, 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 they like still have an upset stomach, but they went to fucking fight. And during the karate match, they just fucking shit their pants, bro. <laughs> fucking Albert versus somebody. They just fucking straight up shit their pants during the match. And the final event happens to be judo, oh, which God. was also sent in by class D. These are all such physical events. There's no way anyone can, you know, do judo when they have laxatives in them. And seeing that Albert was playing for Class D, Ichinose ends up deciding to forfeit the event. Who the fuck could fight in Albert? Class D's victory. Who the fuck could fight Albert in Class B? Uh, the fucking fanboy Kanzaki? I doubt it. Like, there's no like fighters capable in Class B, right? It's just the power of friendship. After that. We get Family. a flashback to the day the exam was announced. Family. Here we see Ishizaki trying to convince Ryuan to help Class D. Their conversation was quite long, but eventually Ryuan tells Ishizaki that they have the best chance against Class B. A few days later, Hiyori oh. calls Ibuki and Ishizaki to plan for the exam at a karaoke bar and also tells them that she managed to convince Ryuan to come there as well. This angel. But Ryuan was supposed to arrive at 4 and it was already 4.30. <gasps> Late! Ibuki wants to leave at this point, but Hiyori convinces her to stick around for a while. And so, they wait okay. for three more hours. <laughs> Bro shows up three and a half hours late to karaoke. What, he was, what was he doing? 
after which Ryuan finally shows up okay. and then they start planning on how to defeat class B. <laughs> he just shows up three and a half hours late just to prove a fucking point. Ryuan also says something very interesting. Was he busy? He says that they have the best chance against class B because they don't have a leader. Naturally, each they have the best chance against class B because they don't have a leader. Each no say doesn't count as a leader in, in Ryuan's eyes. Is that what he's implying? W wait, hold up a second. I don't get what you mean. Each no say is their leader, said Ishizaki. Neither Each no say nor Kanzaki are really natural born leaders. They're kind of people who work to support a leader. Each no say. Would she be better suited in a supportive role? I think that her leadership through power of friendship has done her really well. I mean, even now, she's in fucking B class over Ryuan. Isn't that proof that she is a capable leader? But I definitely do see how Ryuan can see her in like a supportive position and do just as well, if not better. Instead of putting someone like her in charge, they'd be, be way better off if they had someone like Suzune or Katsuragi. <laughs> Ryuan is... Saying Susan is better as leader? I, I think that what Susan and Katsuragi can do that Ichinose can is that they can make the hard, tough decisions. You know? I, I don't think Ichinose could really make a difficult decision. I think Susan could. Susan is cold. And I think in order to be a ruler, in order to lead, in order to rule over a group of people, you have to be able to make difficult, cold decisions. And sometimes, I don't know if Ichinose could. Everything that she's done, she kind of got bailed out by Anakoji and she's had her own way. She's got the cake and she ate it too. I kind of agree with Ryuan here. That's exactly why even Class D, the bottom of the barrel, has a chance of beating them. And they did! Through laxatives. <laughs> but, you know, that's the point. If Ichinose was truly a leader, she could have anticipated this bullshit from happening and called them out in a way that exposes them instead of just, you know, fucking being gaslit. And, you know, we're fucking, you know, stalling and strategizing in the bathroom. Shizaki says that Ichinose is their leader, but Ryuan replies that both Ichinose and Kanzaki are not the leader type and they are the kind of people who work to support their leaders. Straight up, they still could have the 60 mil points, man, if they decided to save, like, if they didn't decide to save somebody, man. Like, that's fucked up. And honestly, like, straight up, not even 60 mil. We could have just had the full 20. Because, like, we could have got, gotten that whole ordeal with Anakoji Bale in the cell, got the 20 mil points, and didn't even save and just started to expel one person. Fuck it. Keep the 20 mil points. Each of us could make that, never make that decision. And I bet you that 20 mil points, at the end of the day, could be more beneficial for everybody else if we just called one person. But it's like, you know, power of friendship. Ryuan also comes there with the list of his 10 events, all of which required physical strength. Cause laxatives. And Ryuan also pulls out <laughs> laxatives. What is that? Wait, wait, is that, is that a laxative? Asked Ibuki. Yeah, it's a slow acting one. The effects are delayed to start after 48 hours. If we can get some of them to ingest it, then we might be able to get one or two of sick of uh, them sick on the day of the test. Hey, that's against the rules though. What if we get found out? Shouted Ibuki. Ibuki, come on. Against the rules? Did you forget season two? You were involved in the fucking waterboarding. Rules? Rules don't fucking exist in the school. If you can get away with it and you don't get caught, that's all that matters. <laughs> so what? Said Ryuan. How the fuck do we make them eat it? How the f Like, did we bake in cookies? Did he only literally fucking bake cookies 48 hours before the test? And was like, oh, hello, everybody. You want some cookies? And they're like, oh, it's Hyori. What an angel. She would never put laxatives in the cookies. Which they're going to use on class B students. And he also tells them to stalk Class B students and gather as much information as possible. That's what Albert was doing, stalking, right? And then get into some small physical conflicts a few days before the exam. Okay. And that's how Ryuan managed to defeat Ichinose. Classic Ryuan strategy. Then we finally move back to Class A. Akito Gigachat, dude. We need to get more of this guy. Apparently he can fight. Apparently he's good at archery. What can't he do, bro? Versus C. Akito carries the class during the archery event resulting in three wins and three losses for both classes. And let it be known, Akito is the reason why Anakoji was allowed to run against Manabu. Akito got injured in second season, the sports festival, and his, his replacement was Anakoji. Let it that be known. And the final event turns out to be chess. Then we actually get a Horikita POV chapter, oh? which starts with the chess match against Hashimoto and ends when Sakai and Agi joins in. Also, the major difference during CGI, this match is CGI, that CGI. the light novel doesn't show the chess match aside from the opening moves. It instead focuses on the atmosphere and dialogue. 
smart. I think that um, not a lot of people like I, I chess is definitely getting more popular, but the average person probably has no idea what's going on. And like the optimal chess play is not really the point of this. It could have been anything, right? It, it chess it didn't have to be chess, but right. The whole point was just get the vibes right, get the outcome correct, and as long as it looks like the chess is proper, then it doesn't really matter, right? After Sakayanagi joined, he just skipped the mental math. Did my man skip the fucking Koenji mental math? Oh shit, he did. Fuck. Mental math. I wanted him to talk about Koenji though. Ah. He was tempted to just watch and see how Horikita fares against Tarisu. It all spoke to how terrifyingly skilled Horikita was right now. One week of training, I did feel tempted to just wait and watch her. I wanted to see how much she had grown. I was curious to see what kind of move she'd make play against Sakayanagi. That's pretty insane if... Anakoji is having a inner thought, you know, recognizing Horikita's skill in just fucking one week of training, huh? Because of how she was about to win against Hashimoto. And after Kyo and Arisu's match begins, he realizes just how incredible Arisu's skills are. Uh, as soon as I started playing, I was forced to understand something that made me gasp. Sakayanagi's chess skills were incredible italicized, enough to be genuinely worthy of my respect. I wouldn't be surprised if she went on to make a name for herself as a professional chess player. Foreshadowing? I don't know. What, what does Arisu want to do? Maybe she'll be a fucking grandmaster of chess for fun. And he also says that he would likely lose if he was not giving it his all. Also, the anime adds the White Room flashback in the middle of the match, slowly showing just why this match is so important for Arisu. I actually- Because she started chess after seeing Anakoji here, right? She saw it, she wanted to play with them. She wanted to like let him know that, you know, the human heart, the warmth, you know, I can reach that. And that was like her entire motivation to start playing at that point, right? I really like this change for the anime adaptation as it makes the match feel way more epic and impactful. Eventually, the match ends with Arisu's win. After that, we have a sus line from Hoshimi Asensei. Hmm. Sus line from Hoshinomiya Sensei. Gee, I wonder what it could be. See, as she says to Kyo that. That was an incredible battle, wasn't it? Anyways, you did an incredible job, Class C. You said, sussy sensei, trying to comfort me, as usual. You fucking, you fucking succubus. If you want, you can go ahead and cry on my chest, okay? <laughs> Hoshinomiya sensei, said Sakagami sensei, snapping his colleague's, and colleague's name in obvious irritation after hearing her say something so ridiculous. So another teacher is present, and this fucking horny-ass teacher... Trying to groom Anakoji. Oh, you wanna fucking come cry on my titties? Come on now. He can cry on her chest if he wants to. But after that, she leans close to his face. Bringing her face near my ear. You know, I don't dislike kids like you. <laughs> Why do you have to say kids? Anakoji Kuni. But if I see you as an enemy, then I might come to hate you. Leaving me with those words, she walked away. The smile gone from her face. It seemed I might have inadvertently have gotten myself labeled an enemy of classy. Because we didn't bury her face in her titties? She's mad? She actually took offense, personally. Because Koji is like, nah, I don't really want to get groomed by a fucking adult. I'm like a high school student. And, and she was like, hmm, you dare not grow my titties in front of another teacher? What was that? It, what, what is this? She sound kind of pissed off right after she fucking got rejected from Koji, man. I don't know. Or is this a fucking warning? I don't know, man. Koji's fucking locked in, though, you know? <laughs> We're locked in, though. And basically threatens him after realizing that Ayano Koji was in fact hiding his true abilities ah. after seeing the chess match and seeing how he answered the hardest mental ah. math question. Ma uh, Matsushita moment, moment too. So Hoshina Miya Sensei obviously observing the chess match. More people realizing the secrets. Gotcha, gotcha. After that, Q and Arisu get the results of Class B's match and realize that they are now once again back to Class D. Then we move on. There it is. We're back to Class D. My theory, which is pretty much a very... Wasn't a fucking crazy guess. I think everyone could have figured that out, right? I mean, Ryuan can't get expelled. So logically, if we lose and Ryuan wins, probably we're gonna get bumped down. We maintain the fucking order. Has anything changed? Yamauchi's gone. That's about it. <laughs> One to the Tsukishiro scene. First up, Tsukishiro straight up calls Arisu useless because <laughs> she gave Ayano Koji a protection point. In I think Tsukishiro said like, oh, congratulations, congratulations on your fucking fraudulent win, Arisu. If you could even call that a fucking win. Like, bro, it's just like, 
He just comes out and just spits straight venom. Like, everything he says is laced with venom. Everything is a fucking underhanded compliment. Provoke, like, he's just trying to provoke us, right? So that we can try to do something and the camera's fucking there to pick him. Instead of getting him expelled, and says that she's the reason their match had to be interfered with. Hmm. He also gets pissed and says that this was the perfect opportunity to get Kyo expelled. Oh, cause of the protection points. I'm like, what are you fucking talking about? He already had the protection points, but onto the point before, she's mad at Arisu for giving the protection points to Kyo. I'm just starting to realize how MVP, you know, Arisu's decisions are this season. Like, she just really cares about Koji, huh? But because of the teachers and Arisu's interference, he managed to survive. After that, Arisu asks Kyo Ooh. for a rematch. And I had intended to be quite about the acting director's Kishiro's interference, but in the end, it might actually be a good thing. The Saka Anagi had found out. Deep down, I was also bothered by what happened, even if only a little. So please, let us continue your competition. Let us pick back up from before the acting director screwed everything up, says Saka Anagi. And then, Anako, we saw that right at the end. I think it was like a post credit scene or something, and we basically won. It would be easy for me to refuse a request, but I felt like it would break something. As, oh, it would break something inside her if I did that, and maybe something in me too. Could you, oh, could you imagine if fucking he just rejected? That'd be so mean. That would be so fucking mean. Imagine he said no and her, the poor smug lolly's heart gets broken. All she wanted to do was just like reach out and be friendly. But we say fucking no. But it's important. He says, and maybe something in me too. Man, K is just getting... Who's K again? And Kyo mentions that even though he didn't plan to tell anyone about the interference, he is glad that Arisu found out. And he also seemed sad that their match was ruined. So they both go to the library and pick up where their match was interrupted. I just can't believe we didn't see a single frame of uh, K, you know, stalking, just like creeping. It's like, what is he doing right now with this fucking smug lolly? Which ends with Arisu's defeat. And after this match, they both come to the realization that they're both evenly matched at chess and there would be no point in another rematch. Evenly matched? Hmm. As for the reason why I'm not going to ask Kick a rematch, to be honest, because I've determined that our chess skills are about even. If we played 10 games for fun, it wouldn't be surprising if we each ended up with 5 wins, 5 losses. Am I wrong in making that assessment, she asked. Nah, it's accurate. If we were to compete against each other and again and again, things would play out just as Saka Nengi said she would. We were evenly matched in ability, which was, huh, I thought that Kyo would never fucking lose if he uh, would actually give a fuck. But now this is kind of confirmation that, yeah, nah, I tie. Pretty much like 50-50 simulations, huh? Okay, evenly Another matched. rematch. After that, they both leave the library and head back. On their way back, Arisu apologizes. I'm sorry, I'm quite a slow walker. <laughs> yeah, no shit. It's her walking kit. He should have gave her a piggyback. He sh I could you imagine if Anakoji gave Arisu a piggyback after all this? I'm sorry, I'm quite slow walker. You just fucking give him a piggyback. You don't have to apologize for that. She was certainly slow. It was because of her disability, though, that we still don't really know about. Though, and uh, oddly enough, I was grateful for that day. If I walked at my usual pace, I would have reached the dorms in no time. I was grateful for that day, today. Ah, so like, he didn't mind. Because like, he just wants to chill. He just wants to spend time with the smug lolly. Sounds like he actually has a genuine friend that he could even see as equals. And he just having the time of his life. Just hanging out with somebody that is above Tool. Does he see Arisu as a Tool? Probably to a certain extent, I think, he's, I, th I think he sees everyone as a tool. But I think Arisu, to a certain degree, maybe closest to an actual friend, an equal? Do we have anyone like that? Does, does Anakoji think anyone is like an, a, a little bit of an equal to him? I don't know. Like, for example, Manabu, what is their relationship other than fucking booty call and potential brother-in-law? Did he ever see Manabu as like an equal or a useful tool? I really don't know. But I feel like Smug Lolly, she's different. She's different from how he treats, like, I don't know, fucking Sakura, sure, fuck it. For being slow. And Kyo says that even though she's slow, he was oddly grateful for that today. Then they talk about a lot of other things, and Arisu even mentions that she's really looking forward to Horikita's growth. After that, Arisu. Why does Arisu care about Susanee's growth? talks about the warmth of human touch, which was handled pretty decently in the anime. Aww. Then they continue walking while talking about ordinary everyday things with the setting sun in the background. It seems she didn't intend to, to tell me anything else. As the two of us walked back to the door and we gazed at the setting sun. That reminds me, have you heard? Yoshida-kun from Class A, he dot dot. 
We didn't have the kind of relationship where you might reminisce about old days, but we had no objective in this moment either. We were just talking about ordinary everyday things just until the moment we arrived at the dorms. I think this is pretty much Anakoji living his dreams, right? Because what does he want to do here? He just wants to fucking get away from his dad, live a normal high school life as normal as it could be, fucking socialize, eat fucking cup ramen at 7-Eleven with fucking pseudo, you know? Yeah, this again, exactly. This truly was our classroom of the elite. Anakoji is just chilling. He's having fun, doing, you know, hanging out with a friend. There's no intentions. We're just talking about dumb high school shit. And he's having the time of his life. And the volume ends with this absolutely beautiful Aww. illustration. <laughs> I mean, it's a beautiful illustration, but goddamn. <laughs> her, her fucking <laughs> stockings garter belt at the camera, <laughs> It's very beautiful, yes. And ending off this arc. All right. And that is all the cut content and changes for this episode. Nice. And now we move on to volume 11.5. Oh? The final volume of the first year. What is the point of the point five volumes, by the way? Because like they seem to always have, you know, some like sometimes it's like point five volume. Is there a specific point why they do that? Is it like a short story compared to the regular volumes? And my top one classroom of the elite volume. It's your favorite. I honestly don't have much expectations because it's gonna be jammed into two episodes, but we'll just have to see. Eleven point five is apparently Mr. Baseless Yupin's favorite, man. Anyways, that should do it for this video. <laughs> Don't think I didn't catch that. <laughs> that should do it. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that, bro. That should do it for me too, guys. Please go give Mr. Baseless you pen a subscription. Like his videos if you did. He always gives us great cut content from Classroom the Elite. And we'll be back tomorrow with another video.